Hi friends, thank you for joining me again. So I'm actually very excited to start this lesson because it is the beginning of a brand new series for me and for you. From this lesson on for the next six months, maybe even a little bit longer, I'm gonna be focusing on sharing with you, teaching you what are the most important things that we should know about if we are Christians, if we love Jesus. What are the basic tools that you should use and know about if you claim to be a follower of Jesus Christ. See, what if I was to ask you friends or a stranger weeks or months down the road, I heard you're a Christian. What does it mean to be a Christian? What would you say to them friends? Um, would you have to think about it for a little while? Would you say, it means I'm a follower of Jesus. It means I love Jesus. That's a great answer and actually it's the correct answer, but it should be more than that. See, what people really want to know is, what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? What does God expect out of me? How am I supposed to behave? What am I supposed to believe? Those are the things that we should understand and fully be aware of. See, I want you guys to be confident in what it means to follow Jesus Christ, to be a Christian. That way, years down the road, if someone comes up to you and asks you, you'll know exactly what to say. And you can even lead them to know Jesus. And if someone, hopefully this never happens to you, but if someone tries to tell you differently that this is what it means to follow Jesus and it's wrong, then you will know. You will be like, that's not right. I know what it means to be a Christian and that's not it. That is why I am starting this new series of what are the basic tools that you should know about to be a Christian. So today I'm going to be talking about the most important subject or person in all of the Christian faith. And that's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, there is nothing more important about being a Christian than Jesus Christ. Christ, his name is even in the word Christian. That's why we're called Christians. Everything in the word of God leads back to Jesus in some way or another. Jesus Christ is amazing. So let's start there. Who is Jesus Christ? Who is he? Well, first and foremost, Jesus Christ is God. I say it that way because Jesus Christ was God before he created us and before he created this world. In John 1, 1 to 4, it tells us, before the world began, there was Jesus Christ. Jesus was with God and Jesus was God. He was with God in the beginning and all things were made through Jesus. Nothing was made without him. In Jesus, there was life and that life was the light for the people of the world. That's just a beautiful scripture. I love that scripture. So it's saying in the scripture that Jesus Christ was there at the beginning before the world began. And it says that he wasn't alone. Did you notice that? It says that Jesus Christ is God, but also was with God. So what does that mean, friends? What that means is that Jesus Christ was with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. See, this might be a reminder to all of you, or maybe this will be the first time you've ever heard this, but as Christians, we worship one God, but that one God is made up of three different people. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ is God the Son. So this can sound a little confusing sometimes, friends. In fact, it's confusing to me and I don't completely understand it, to be honest. But the scripture says this and we believe it because the scriptures do not make mistakes. They are inspired by God and the Bible, the scriptures, are true. So it says that we worship one God, but that one God is made up of three different people. We do not worship three gods. That is definitely not what we do. We worship one God. So it also says that Jesus Christ, everything was made through him in that scripture. That means that Jesus Christ is a creator as well as a God. He loves to make things. He loves to create things. And it says that he brings life into this world. 
That means that you are sitting there right now, breathing in oxygen, alive because of Jesus, because he had something to do with your creation, your existence. He made everything else too, everything that you could see that has life in it. Um, the birds in the air, uh, the fish in the sea, all the animals on the land, the vegetation, the trees, the flowers, the insects, everything you could see, even the mountains, the oceans. Jesus had something to do with all of that. That's just awesome. And he created it into existence just by speaking it. Isn't that amazing? I think that's amazing. So, moving on. When Jesus created the world, along with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit, he made it perfect. No mistakes. Absolutely gorgeous place. I can't even imagine how amazing it was because we don't live in a perfect world right now. But he made it perfect and he put two perfect human beings on there. You may already know their names. It was Adam and Eve. And he made them absolutely amazing, gorgeous human beings. I'm sure they were beautiful because they were perfect and they were created to live forever. And because he loved them, he gave them a choice how to live. He didn't tell them this is exactly how you have to live because that wouldn't really be love. But he gave them a choice. He said, you could follow my commands or you can do your own thing and disobey me. And unfortunately, Adam and Eve disobeyed God. And because they disobeyed God, they would eventually die and they brought sin into the world by disobeying God. That also meant, unfortunately, friends, that every human being born after Adam and Eve automatically had sin in them. And this world went from perfect to not perfect and with sin in it. And that's really sad to see and to just accept because we are all born into this world with sin in us without a choice. We didn't choose that. So let's talk about sin. What is sin? Well, sin is the opposite of being good. Sin is bad. Sin is evil. God cannot tolerate sin and he wants to destroy it because God is good and he's perfect. And examples of sin would be murder, stealing, lying, deceitfulness, selfishness, pride, pretty much anything that you could think of that's bad, that's evil, that's sin. And unfortunately, we have those things in us. We have the potential to be that way if we're not careful. And we deserve to be destroyed because we have sin in us. And I know that sounds terrible, but let's not forget our God loves us and he wanted to give us a way out. He did that because he loves us and because he knows, friends, that it wasn't fair for us to be born into this world of sin. We didn't choose to be born into this world. It was Adam and Eve who made that mistake and then we had to pay for it. So God wanted to give us a way out and he sent his son Jesus. Jesus came willingly to take the punishment that we deserved. He decided he was gonna take the punishment for the whole world's sin. Everyone born at that time, at the beginning, all the way to even the people who haven't been born yet. All they would have to do is this one thing that I'll get to later. But it says in Isaiah 9, 6, this is what Jesus did. A child will be born to us. God will give us a son. He will be responsible for leading the people. His name will be Wonderful Counselor, Powerful God, Father who lives forever and Prince of Peace. Oh, that's an awesome verse. And it's saying here that what Jesus Christ did was he was born as a child into the world and he grew up a human child, a human being, and grew up and he eventually took our sin for us. In 1 Peter 3, 8, it tells us exactly what he did once he became a man, once he grew up to be a man. It says, Christ himself died for you, and that one death paid for your sins. He was not guilty, but he died for those who are guilty. He did this, be he did this to bring you all to God. His body was killed, but he was made alive in the spirit. So he died for you to be able to continue to have a relationship with you. 
Now it's important to point out that when Jesus Christ died, he rose from the dead, came back to life three days later, and then he went back up to heaven with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to get too much into this part, but the Holy Spirit eventually came down and um, started working through the rest of the world for those of who were following Jesus Christ. So, I want to bring home a certain point, friends. So, I want to share this picture of Jesus Christ on the throne. And it's just a beautiful picture of him, isn't it? He's looking majestic, he's looking beautiful and powerful, and he has all that army of angels standing beside him, waiting to be commanded by him because they love him. This amazing God who could do amazing things like speak things into existence just by talking, who can have conversations with everyone at the same time because he's God. He could do things like that. He went from a God like that to an image of this picture of a baby in a manger here. So I'm showing you these pictures of the baby in a manger because I want you to understand that our amazing Jesus Christ went from God to a helpless child. A child that couldn't protect itself, couldn't uh, feed itself, couldn't bathe itself, couldn't do pretty much anything on his own and depended on two sinful human beings, his mother and father, Joseph and Mary, to take care of him so that he could eventually take a punishment for us. And he gave up a lot of his godly privileges to do that because he became a human being. And he did that because he loves us and because he knew that it wasn't fair for us to be punished for our sins. That's just an awesome story, friends. Makes you think, would you do that for people who don't even know you yet? It makes me question if I would be able to do something like that because God loves us that much that he did it for everyone in the world, even those people who reject him and still don't believe in him. He did that for every human being that would ever be born on this planet. So, since Jesus went through all of this, it's important for us to truly understand what it takes for us to be saved. What do we have to do to be saved and not take that punishment that we deserve as sinful people? Well, it says in Romans 10, 9, here's what it says. It says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from death, then you will be saved. Now that's pretty clear, right friends? It says that if we say it out loud, that Jesus Christ is Lord, he's our God, and we believe that he died for our sins. He took the punishment for our sins. He died on that cross for our sins and eventually rose again and he went up to heaven. If we believe that that happened, then we will be saved. It says if we believe it in our hearts, we can't just say it, we have to truly believe it with everything we have. God will see that and know that and we will be saved and we will not have to take the punishment for our sins and we will eventually be with God forever. That's just a beautiful thing, isn't it? So I want to ask you, if you're watching this and you have not given your life to Jesus but you want to, please repeat after me. You can say, Lord Jesus, I know you love me and I know you died on a cross for my sins. And I believe it with all my heart. So thank you. Please make me yours and please make me brand new. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, I rejoice with you right now and it's going to be the best decision you have ever made, friends. It was the best decision I ever made. Okay. So, one more thing that I want to share that is so important for those who follow Jesus Christ, who claim to be Christians. We have a responsibility as followers of Jesus. God expects us to tell our story to others. He expects us to be witnesses for Him. See, we need to tell other people what are the good things that Jesus Christ did in our lives. So it's proof that we can show them that God is alive, that He's real. 
that is our responsibility, friends. Do not forget it. And it's just awesome to be able to share about Jesus so other people can be saved, isn't it? I think so. All right, I want to share a few important facts about Jesus that you may or may not have known. So the first one I want to share is that Jesus Christ was born in the town of Nazareth, but he was raised in the town of, uh, sorry, Jesus Christ was born in the town of Bethlehem, but he was raised in Nazareth, my mistake. So he was an Israeli, he was born in Israel, but he was technically a Middle Eastern Hebraic Jewish man. Why am I saying all that? Well, I want you to picture it. He was in Israel. If you know what people from Israel kind of look like, keep that in mind. So all of us here in the States, I'm going to assume, maybe not, uh, were raised with pictures that look like this of Jesus. This is handsome Jesus. So that's a beautiful looking guy, right? Beautiful long hair, good looking uh, features. But I hate to break it to you, friends, that's not what Jesus looked like. See, Jesus came from Israel. And unfortunately, whoever painted those pictures just wanted you guys to get an image and an understanding that Jesus was a comforter. He was, he was loving and kind and welcoming to everyone. And he was. Jesus Christ was all those things, but no one actually knows what Jesus really looked like, at least not today, because that was such a long time ago and nobody wrote down exactly what he looked like. So I looked into this and there are people who have studied this for years, much smarter than me, who say that Jesus looked a lot more like this next picture. Now, if you're thinking, Andy, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, let me just remind you, friends, nobody knows exactly what Jesus looked like. So this guy doesn't look, this isn't exactly what Jesus looked like, but he did look more like this. He had darker skin. He probably had curly hair because this is what Hebraic Jewish men from Israel tend to look like. And I'll say it because you may not want to say it out loud, but this isn't so much of a good looking man, is it? All right, so I want to show you in scripture what it says about what Jesus looked like. In Isaiah 53, 2, it says, He grew up like a young plant, like a root growing in dry ground. There was nothing special or impressive about the way he looked. Nothing we could see that would cause us to like him. That's such an important scripture to understand when it comes to wondering what Jesus looked like, friends. Because it says there that there was nothing special or impressive about the way he looked. That means that if you saw him on the street, you would just think he was just this like normal looking, plain looking guy. I know when you see a good looking person, you're like, wow, that person is dressed nice or wow, she's beautiful. That's not what the scripture is saying about Jesus. It's saying that there was nothing impressive to our eyes about the way he looked. So he probably wasn't good looking. I can only speculate as to why that was, but God had good reasons for it. But remember friends, people still flock to Jesus from all over. He healed people, he loved on people, he taught 12 disciples how to tell about the way to love others. He did amazing things and nowadays you can pretty much go anywhere and mention Jesus Christ and everybody knows who you're talking about. That's the kind of impact Jesus made. So he was beautiful from the inside out. But just an interesting thing to know that Jesus wasn't very, um, didn't look like the pictures that I had first showed you that maybe you grew up with. All right, moving on. Another really interesting thing about Jesus is did you know that he had a lot of siblings? He had brothers and sisters. He had technically four brothers and more than one sister, but it doesn't say how many sisters or their names. His brothers were James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon. And in Mark 6, 3, it tells us about this. It says, is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? So this is a group of people talking who are trying to figure out, isn't this the same Jesus that 
like lives down my street, my neighbor. So that's an interesting fact, isn't it, friends? Like makes you think like, what if you were to grow up with Jesus? I wonder how that would be. He'd probably be this brother who you were annoyed at, or at least I would be annoyed at because he did everything right. But anyway, okay. Last thing I wanna share about Jesus is that he had 12 disciples that I'm sure you know about. Um, but if you don't, he had 12 disciples that he chose himself and he taught them the ways, um, his ways. He taught them how to love, he taught them scripture, he taught them how to tell others about what he was going to do, that sacrifice he made on the cross for all of us. And I'm gonna read them off to you because most of us don't really know all the names of the 12 disciples. Here they are. It's Andrew, Bartholomew, James, son of Zebedee, James, son of Alphaeus, John, Judas Iscariot, Jude, Matthew, Matthias, Simon Peter, Philip, Simon, the Zealot, and Thomas. <laughs> wow. That's quite a few, right? Many of us think that Mark and, uh, I don't know, what's the other one? Luke were um, disciples because they're books of the Bible, but they weren't actually disciples of Jesus. They came after. But anyway, I'm gonna close with a very famous scripture that pretty much entails, pretty much encompasses what Jesus Christ did and why he's so amazing. It's John 3, 16, and it says, God loved the world so much that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him would not be lost, but have eternal life. So let's remember that scripture, friends. John 3, 16. God loved us so much that Jesus Christ came down and sacrificed himself so that we could always be connected to him. All we have to do was believe in Jesus and what he did, and that we'll be with Jesus forever when we die or when he comes back again save us and transform this world into a perfect world again and it's going to be amazing. Okay, let's pray. Father in heaven, I just thank you so much for loving us the way that you have by sending your son Jesus Christ to sacrifice himself so that we could be with you and just live with you in a perfect eternal life. I pray that all of us continue to follow your footsteps, that all of us continue to um, understand and really take in what are the most important things that we need to understand when we claim to be Jesus Christ followers, Christians. Until we meet again, and I pray that you protect us all until we meet. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.